And now, chapter 17 of the Madhya the Lord travels to Vrindavan. On his way to Vrindavan, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed through the forest of Jarakanda and made all the tigers, elephants, deer and birds dance and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Thus all these animals were overwhelmed by ecstatic love. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda. All glories to Advaita Chandra. All glories to the devotees of the Lord. When autumn arrived, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to go to Vrindavan. In a solitary place, he consulted with Ramananda Rai and Svarup Damodar Goswami. The Lord requested Ramananda Rai and Svarup Damodar Goswami to help him go to Vrindavan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I shall leave early in the morning and go incognito, taking the road to the forest. I shall go alone and not take anyone with me. If someone wants to follow me, please stop him. I don't want anyone to go with me. Please give me your permission with great pleasure, and do not be unhappy. If you are happy, I shall be happy on my way to Vrindavan. Upon hearing this, Ramananda Roy and Svarup Damada Goswami replied, Dear Lord, you are completely independent. Since you are not dependent on anyone, you do whatever you desire. Dear Lord, kindly hear our one petition. You have already said that you will derive happiness from our happiness. This is your own statement. If you will please accept just one request, we shall be very, very happy. Our Lord, please take one very nice Brahmin with you. He will collect alms for you and cook for you, give you prasad and carry your water pot while traveling. When you go through the jungle, there will be no Brahmin available from whom you can accept lunch. Therefore, please give permission for at least one pure Brahmin to accompany you. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I shall not take any of my associates with me, because if I choose someone, all the others will be unhappy. Such a person must be a new man, and he must have a peaceful mind. If I can obtain such a man, I shall agree to take him with me. Svarup Damodar then said, Here is Balabhadra Bhattacharya, who has great love for you. He is an honest, learned scholar and he is advanced in spiritual consciousness. In the beginning he came with you from Bengal. It is his desire to see and visit all the holy places of pilgrimage. In addition, you may take another Brahmin who would act as a servant en route and make arrangements for your food. If you can also take him with you, we will be very happy. If two people go with you through the jungle, there will certainly be no difficulty or inconvenience. The other Brahmin can carry your cloth and water pot, and Balabhadra Bhattacharya will collect alms and cook for you. Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted the request of Svarup Damada Pandit and agreed to take Balabhadra Bhattacharya with him. On the previous night, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had visited Lord Jagannath and taken his permission. Now, near the end of night, the Lord got up and started immediately. He was not seen by others. Because the Lord had departed, the devotees, unable to see him early in the morning, began to search for him with great anxiety. While all the devotees were searching for the Lord, Svarup Damodar restrained them. Then everyone fell silent knowing the mind of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord abandoned walking on the well-known public road and went instead along a bypass. He thus kept the city of Katak on his right as he entered the forest.
When the Lord passed through the solitary forest, chanting the holy name of Krishna, the tigers and elephants, seeing him, gave way. When the Lord passed through the jungle in great ecstasy, packs of tigers, elephants, rhinoceroses, and boars came, and the Lord passed right through them. Balabhadra Bhattacharya was very much afraid to see them, but by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's influence, all the animals stood to one side. One day a tiger was lying on the path, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, walking along the path in ecstatic love, touched the tiger with his feet. The Lord said, Chant the holy name of Krishna! The tiger immediately got up and began to dance and chant, Krishna! Krishna! Another day, while Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was bathing in the river, a herd of maddened elephants came there to drink water. While the Lord was bathing and murmuring the Gayatri Mantra, the elephants came before Him. The Lord immediately splashed some water on the elephants and asked them to chant the name of Krishna. The elephants, whose bodies were touched by the water splashed by the Lord, began to chant, Krishna! and dance and sing in ecstasy. Some of the elephants fell to the ground, and some screamed in ecstasy. Seeing this, Balabhadra Bhattacharya was completely astonished. Sometimes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted very loudly while passing through the jungle. Hearing his sweet voice, all the does came near him. Hearing the Lord's great vibration, all the does followed him left and right. While reciting a verse with great curiosity, the Lord patted them. Quoting the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Lord said, Blessed are all these foolish deer, because they have approached the son of Maharaj Nanda, who is gorgeously dressed and is playing on his flute. Indeed, both the does and the bucks worship the Lord with looks of love and affection. While Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was passing through the jungle, five or seven tigers came. Joining the deer, the tigers began to follow the Lord. Seeing the tigers and deer following him, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately remembered the land of Vrindavan. He then began to recite a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, describing the transcendental quality of Vrindavan. He said, Vrindavan is the transcendental abode of the Lord. There is no hunger, anger, or thirst there. Though naturally inimical, both human beings and fierce animals live together there in transcendental friendship. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Chant Krishna, Krishna, the tigers and deer began to dance and chant, Krishna! When all the tigers and does danced and jumped, Balabhadra Bhattacharya saw them and was struck with wonder. Indeed, the tigers and deer began to embrace one another, and touching mouths, they began to kiss. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw all this fun, he began to smile. Finally, he left the animals and continued on his way. Various birds, including the peacock, saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and began to follow him, chanting and dancing. They were all maddened by the holy name of Krishna. When the Lord loudly chanted, Hari Bol, the trees and creepers became jubilant to hear him. Thus all living entities, some moving and some standing still in the forest of Jarakanda, became maddened by hearing the holy name of Lord Krishna vibrated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In all the villages through which the Lord passed, and in all the places He rested on His journey, everyone was purified and awakened to ecstatic love of God. 
when someone heard the chanting of the holy name from the mouth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and someone else heard this chanting from that second person, and someone again heard this chanting from the third person, everyone in all countries became a Vaishnav through such disciplic succession. Thus everyone chanted the holy name of Krishna and Hari, and they danced, cried, and smiled. The Lord did not always manifest His ecstasy. Being afraid of a great assembly of people, the Lord kept His ecstasy concealed. Although Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not manifest His natural ecstatic love, everyone became a pure devotee simply by seeing and hearing Him. In this way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally toured Bengal, East Bengal, Orissa, and the southern countries, and he delivered all kinds of people by spreading Krishna consciousness. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Jarakanda on his way to Mathura, he found that the people there were almost uncivilized and were devoid of God consciousness. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave even the Beals or primitives an opportunity to chant the holy name and come to the platform of ecstatic love. Thus he delivered all of them. Who has the power to understand the transcendental pastimes of the Lord? When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed through the Jarakanda forest, he took it for granted that it was Vrindavan. When he passed over the hills, he took it for granted that they were Govardhan. Similarly, whenever Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw a river, he immediately accepted it as the river Yamuna. Thus, while in the forest, he was filled with great ecstatic love, and he danced and fell down crying. Along the way, Balabhadra Bhattacharya collected all kinds of spinach, roots, and fruit whenever possible. Whenever Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited a village, a few Brahmins, five or seven, would come and extend invitations to the Lord. Some people would bring grains and deliver them to Balabhadra Bhattacharya. Others would bring milk and yogurt, and still others would bring ghee and sugar. In some villages there were no Brahmins. Nevertheless, devotees born in non-Brahmin families came and extended invitations to Balabhadra Bhattacharya. Balabhadra Bhattacharya used to cook all kinds of vegetables gathered from the forest, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very pleased to accept these preparations. Balabhadra Bhattacharya used to keep a stock of food grains that would last from two to four days. Where there were no people, he would cook the grains and prepare vegetables, spinach, roots and fruits collected from the forest. The Lord was always very happy to eat these forest vegetables, and He was even happier when He had an opportunity to stay in a solitary place. Balabhadra Bhattacharya was so affectionate to the Lord that He was rendering service just like a menial servant. His assistant Brahman carried the water pot and garments. The Lord used to bathe three times a day in the warm water of the waterfalls. He also used to heat Himself morning and evening with a fire made of the limitless wood. While traveling in this secluded forest and feeling very happy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made the following statement. My dear Bhattacharya, I have traveled very far through the forest and I have not even slightly received any trouble. Krishna is very merciful especially to me. He has shown His mercy by bringing me on this path through the forests. Thus He has given me great pleasure. Before this, I decided to go to Vrindavan and on the way see my mother, the river Ganges, and other devotees once again. I thought that once again I would see and meet all the devotees and take them with me to Vrindavan. Thus I went to Bengal and I was very happy to see my mother, the river Ganges, and the devotees. However, when I started for Vrindavan, many thousands and millions of people gathered and began to go with me. Thus, I was going to Vrindavan with a big crowd, but through the mouth of Sanatan, Krishna taught me a lesson. Thus, by making some impediment, He has brought me on a path through the forest to Vrindavan. 
Krishna is just an ocean of mercy. He is especially merciful to the poor and fallen. Without His mercy, there is no possibility of happiness. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then embraced Balabhadra Bhattacharya and told him, It is only by your kindness that I am now so happy. Balabhadra Bhattacharya replied, My dear Lord, you are Krishna Himself, and therefore you are merciful. I am a fallen living entity, but you have bestowed a great favor upon me. Sir, I am most fallen, yet you have brought me with you. Showing great mercy, you have accepted food prepared by me. You have made me your carrier, your Garuda, although I am no better than a condemned crow. Thus, you are the independent personality of Godhead, the original Lord. As it is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has the form of Satchitananda Vigraha, transcendental bliss, knowledge, and eternity. I offer my respectful obeisances unto He who turns the dumb into eloquent speakers and enables the lame to cross mountains. Such is the mercy of the Lord. In this way, Balabhadra Bhattacharya offered his prayers to the Lord. By rendering service unto Him in ecstatic love, He pacified the Lord's mind. Finally, the Lord, with great happiness, arrived at the holy place called Kashi. There, He took His bath in the bathing ghat known as Manikarnika. At that time, Tapan Mishra was taking his bath in the Ganges, and he was astonished to see the Lord there. Tapan Mishra then began to think, I have heard that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has accepted the renounced order. Thinking this, Tapan Mishra became very jubilant within his heart. He then clasped the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and began to cry. The Lord raised him up and embraced him. Tapan Mishra then took Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to visit the temple of Vishveshvar. Coming from there, they saw the lotus feet of Lord Bindu Madhava. With great pleasure, Tapan Mishra brought Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home and rendered service unto him. Indeed, he began to dance, waving his cloth. He washed the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and afterwards he and his whole family drank the wash water. He also worshipped Balabhadra Bhattacharya and showed him respect. Tapan Mishra invited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take lunch at his home, and he had Balabhadra Bhattacharya cook. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his rest after lunch, the son of Tapan Mishra, named Raghu, used to massage his legs. The remnants of food left by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu were taken by the whole family of Tapan Mishra. When the news spread that the Lord had come, Chandra Shekhar also came to see him. Chandra Shekhar happened to be a friend of Tapan Mishra's and he was long known to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as his servant. He was a physician by caste, and by profession he was a clerk. At the time he was living in Varanasi. When Chandra Shekhar came there, he fell down before the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and began to cry. The Lord, standing up, embraced him out of his causeless mercy. Chandra Shekhar said, My dear Lord, you bestowed your causeless mercy upon me, because I am your old servant. Indeed, you have come here personally to give me your audience. Due to my past deeds, I am residing at Varnasi, but here I do not hear anything but the words Maya and Brahman. There is no talk at Varnasi other than the discussions on the six philosophical theses. Nonetheless, Tapan Mishra has been very kind to me, for he speaks about topics relating to Lord Krishna. My dear Lord, we too think of your lotus feet incessantly. Although you are the omniscient supreme personality of Godhead, you have granted us your audience. My Lord, I have heard that you are going to Vrindavan. After you stay here at Varnasi for some days, please deliver us, for we are your two servants. Tapan Mishra then said, My dear Lord, 
As long as you stay in Varnasi, please do not accept any invitation other than mine. Even though he had not made such a plan, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu remained for ten days at Varnasi, being obligated by the requests of his two servants. At Varnasi, there was a Maharashtrian Brahmin who used to come daily to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This Brahmin was simply astonished to see the Lord's personal beauty and ecstatic love for Krishna. When the Brahmins of Varnasi would invite Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to lunch, the Lord would not accept their invitation. He would reply, I have already been invited somewhere else. Every day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu refused their invitation because he feared associating with Mayavadi sannyasis. There was a great Mayavadi sannyasi named Prakashananda Sarasvati who used to teach Vedanta philosophy to a great assembly of followers. One Brahmin who saw the wonderful behavior of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to Prakashananda Sarasvati and described the Lord's characteristics. The Brahmin told Prakashananda Sarasvati, There is a sannyasi who is Kamam Jagannath Puri, and I cannot describe his wonderful influence and glories. Everything is wonderful about that sannyasi. He has a very well-built and luxurious body, and his complexion, oh, it is like, like purified gold. He has arms that extend to his knees, and his eyes are like the petals of a lotus. In his person are all the transcendental symptoms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. When one sees all these features, one takes him to be Narayan himself. Whoever sees him immediately begins to chant the holy name of Krishna. We have heard about the symptoms of a first-class devotee in Srimad Bhagavatam. And all those symptoms, yes, they are manifest in the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His tongue, his tongue is always chanting the holy name of Krishna, and, and from his eyes, tears incessantly fall like the flowing Ganges. And sometimes he dances and laughs, sings and cries, and sometimes he roars like a lion. His name is Krishna Chaitanya, and it is all auspicious to the world. Everything about him, his name, form, and qualities, they are unparalleled. Simply by seeing him, one understands that he possesses all the characteristics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such characteristics are certainly uncommon. I mean, who will believe it? Prakashananda Sarasvati laughed very much to hear this description. Joking and laughing at the Brahmin, he began to speak as follows. He said, Yes, I have heard about him. He is a sannyasi from Bengal, and he is very sentimental. I have also heard that he belongs to the Bharati Sampradaya, for he is the disciple of Keshava Bharati. However, he is only a pretender. I know that his name is Sri Krishna Chaitanya, and that he is accompanied by many sentimentalists. His followers dance with him, and he tours from country to country, and village to village. Whoever sees him accepts him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Since he has some mystic power by which he hypnotizes people, everyone who sees him is just illusioned. Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was a very learned scholar, but I have heard that he also has become a madman due to his association with this Chaitanya. This Chaitanya is a sannyasi in name only. Actually, he is a first-class magician. In any case, his sentimentalism cannot be very much in demand here, in Kashi. Do not go to see this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just continue hearing the Vedanta. If you associate with upstarts, you will be lost in this world and in the next. When the Brahmin heard Prakashananda Sarasvati speak like this about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became very grief-stricken. Chanting the holy name of Krishna, he immediately left. The Brahmin's mind was already purified by seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
He therefore went to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and described what took place before the Mayavadi sannyasi, Prakashananda. Hearing this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mildly smiled. The Brahmin then spoke again to the Lord. He said, As soon as I uttered your name before him, he immediately confirmed the fact that he knew your name. While finding fault with you, he uttered your name three times, saying, Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. Although he spoke your name three times, he did not utter the name of Krishna. Because he uttered your name in contempt, I was very much aggrieved. Why could Prakashananda not utter the names of Krishna and Hari? He chanted the name Chaitanya thrice. As far as I am concerned, simply by seeing you, I am moved to chant the holy names of Krishna and Hari. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, Mayavadi impersonalists are great offenders unto Lord Krishna. Therefore they simply utter the words Brahman, Atma and Chaitanya. The holy name of Krishna is not manifest in their mouths because they are offenders unto Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is identical with His holy name. The Lord's holy name, His form, and His personality are all one and the same. There is no difference between them. Since all of them are absolute, they are transcendentally blissful. There is no difference between Krishna's body and Himself, or between His name and Himself. As far as the conditioned soul is concerned, everything is different. One's name is different from the body, from one's original form, and so on. As mentioned in the Padma Purana, the holy name of Krishna is transcendentally blissful. It bestows all spiritual benedictions, for it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of all pleasure. Krishna's name is complete, and it is the form of all transcendental mellows. It is not a material name under any condition, and it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. Since Krishna's name is not contaminated by the material qualities, there is no question of its being involved with Maya. Krishna's name is always liberated and spiritual. It is never conditioned by the laws of material nature. This is because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are identical. The holy name of Krishna, his body and his pastimes cannot be understood by blunt material senses. They are manifest independently. The holy name of Krishna, his transcendental qualities and pastimes, as well as Lord Krishna himself, are all equal. They are all spiritual and full of bliss. Therefore, material senses cannot appreciate Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. When a conditioned soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the Lord's holy name and taste the remnants of the Lord's food, the tongue is purified and one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. The mellows of Lord Krishna's pastimes, which are full of bliss, attract the jnani from the pleasure of Brahman realization and conquer him. Sutta Goswami says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, the son of Vyasadeva, Shukdev Goswami. It is he who defeats all inauspicious things within this universe. Although in the beginning he was absorbed in the happiness of Brahman realization and was living in a secluded place, giving up all other types of consciousness, he became attracted by the most melodious pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna. He therefore mercifully spoke the Supreme Purana known as Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the bright light of the Absolute Truth and which describes the activities of Lord Krishna. The transcendental qualities of Sri Krishna are completely blissful and relishable. Consequently, Lord Krishna's qualities attract even the minds of self-realized persons from the bliss of self-realization. Those who are self-satisfied and unattracted by external material desires are also attracted to the loving service of Sri Krishna, whose qualities are transcendental and whose activities are wonderful. Hari, 
The personality of Godhead is called Krishna because he has such transcendentally attractive features. Apart from the pastimes of Lord Krishna, when Tulsi leaves are offered at the lotus feet of Krishna, even the aroma of the leaves attracts the minds of self-realized persons. When the breeze carrying the aroma of Tulsi leaves and saffron from the lotus feet of the lotus-eyed personality of Godhead, enter through the nostrils into the hearts of those sages, namely the Kumaras, they experienced a change in both body and mind, even though they were attached to impersonal Brahmin understanding. Because the Maya bodies are great offenders and atheistic philosophers, the holy name of Krishna does not come from their mouths. I have come here to sell my emotional ecstatic sentiments in this city of Kashi, but I cannot find any customers. If they are not sold, I must take them back home. I have brought a heavy load to sell in this city. To take it back again is a very difficult job. Therefore, if I get but a fraction of the price, I shall sell it here in this city of Kashi. After saying this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accepted that Brahmin as his devotee. The next morning, rising very early, the Lord started for Mathura. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started for Mathura, all three devotees started to go with him. However, the Lord forbade them to accompany him, and from a distance he asked them to return home. Feeling separation from the Lord, the three used to meet and glorify the holy qualities of the Lord. Thus they were absorbed in ecstatic love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then went to Prayag, where he bathed at the confluence of the Ganges and the Yamuna. He then visited the temple of Veni Madhava and chanted and danced there in ecstatic love. As soon as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu saw the river Yamuna, he threw himself in it. Balabhadra Bhattacharya hastily caught the Lord and very carefully raised him up again. The Lord stayed at Prayag for three days. He delivered the holy name of Krishna and ecstatic love. Thus he delivered many people. Wherever the Lord stopped to rest on the way to Mathura, he delivered the holy name of Krishna and ecstatic love of Krishna. Thus he made the people dance. When the Lord toured South India, he delivered many people and when he traveled in the western sector, he similarly converted many people to Vaishnavism. While the Lord was going to Mathura, he came across the river Yamuna several times, and as soon as he saw the river Yamuna, he would immediately jump in, falling unconscious in the water in the ecstasy of love of Krishna. When he approached Mathura and saw the city, he immediately fell to the ground and offered obeisances with great ecstatic love. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu entered the city of Mathura, he took his bath at Vishram Ghat. He then visited the birthplace of Krishna and saw the deity named Keshavaji. He offered his respectful obeisances to this deity. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted, danced, and made loud vibrations, all the people were astonished to see his ecstatic love. One Brahmin fell at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then began to dance with him in ecstatic love. Both of them danced in ecstatic love and embraced one another. Raising their arms, they said, Chant the holy names of Hari and Krishna! All the people then began to chant, Hari! Hari! And there was a great uproar. The priest in Lord Keshava's service offered Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu a garland. When the people saw Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dancing and chanting, they were struck with wonder, and they all said, Such transcendental love is never an ordinary thing. Simply by seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, everyone is maddened with love of Krishna, 
Indeed, everyone is laughing, crying, dancing, chanting, and taking the holy name of Krishna. Certainly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in all respects the incarnation of Lord Krishna. Now, he has come to Mathura to deliver everyone. After this, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took aside the Brahmin. Sitting in a solitary place, the Lord began to question him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You are an elderly Brahmin. You are sincere, and you are advanced in spiritual life. Wherefrom have you gotten this transcendental opulence of ecstatic love for Krishna? The Brahmin replied, His Holiness Srila Madhavendra Puri came to the city of Mathura while he was on tour. While at Mathura, Sripad Madhavendra Puri visited my house and accepted me as a disciple. He even took lunch at my home. After installing the deity Gopal, Srila Madhavendra Puri rendered him service. That very deity is still being worshipped at Govardhan Hill. As soon as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard about Madhavendra Puri's relationship with the Brahmin, he immediately offered obeisances at his feet. Becoming fearful, the Brahmin also immediately fell at the Lord's feet. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, You are on the platform of my spiritual master, and I am your disciple. Since you are my spiritual master, it is not befitting that you offer me obeisances. Upon hearing this, the Brahmin became afraid. He then said, Why do you speak like this? You are a sannyasi. Upon seeing your ecstatic love, I can just imagine that you must have some relationship with Madhavendra Puri. This is my understanding. This kind of ecstatic love can be experienced only when one has a relationship with Madhavendra Puri. Without him, even a scent of such transcendental ecstatic love is impossible. Balabhadra Bhattacharya then explained the relationship between Madhavendra Puri and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. After hearing this, the Brahmin became very pleased and began to dance. The Brahmin then took Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to his home and out of his own free will began to serve the Lord in various ways. He asked Balabhadra Bhattacharya to cook Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lunch. At that time the Lord, smiling, spoke as follows. Madhavendra Puri has already taken lunch at your place. Therefore you may cook and give me the food. That is my instruction. Whatever action is performed by a great man, common men follow. And whatever standards he sets by exemplary acts, all the world pursues. The Brahmin belonged to the Sanodiya Brahmin community. And a sannyasi does not accept food from such a Brahmin because he is considered to be of a lower class type. Although the Brahmin belonged to the Sanodiya community, Srila Madhavendra Puri saw that he behaved like a Vaishnav and therefore accepted him as a disciple. The food he cooked was also accepted by Madhavendra Puri. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu willingly requested food from the Brahmin, and the Brahmin, feeling natural humility, began to speak as follows. It is a great fortune for me to offer you food. You are the Supreme Lord, and being in the transcendental position, you are not restricted in any way. Foolish people will blaspheme you, but I, I shall not tolerate the words of such mischievous people. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied, The Vedas, Puranas, and great learned sages are not always in agreement with one another. Consequently, there are different religious principles. A devotee's behavior establishes the true purpose of religious principles. The behavior of Madhavendra Puri Goswami is the essence of such religious principles. Dry arguments are inconclusive. A great personality whose opinion does not differ from others is not considered a great sage. Simply by studying the Vedas, which are variegated, one cannot come to the right path, 
by which religious principles are understood. The solid truth of religious principles is hidden in the heart of an unadulterated, self-realized person. Consequently, as the Shastras confirm, one should accept whatever progressive path the Mahajans advocate. After this discussion, the Brahmin gave lunch to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then all the people residing at Mathura came to see the Lord. People came by the hundreds of thousands, and no one could count them. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came out of the house to give audience to the people. When the people assembled, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu raised his arms and said very loudly, Hari The people responded to the Lord and became ecstatic. As if mad, they began to dance and vibrate the transcendental sound, Hari! 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 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bathed in twenty-four ghats along the banks of the Yamuna, and the Brahmin showed him all the places of pilgrimage. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited all the holy places on the banks of the Yamuna, including Svayambhu, Vishram Ghat, Dirga Vishnu, Bhuteshvar, Mahavidya, and Gokarn. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted to see the various forests of Vrindavan, he took the Brahmin with him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited the different forests, including Madhuvan, Talavan, Kumadavan, Bhulavan. Wherever he went, he took his bath with great ecstatic love. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed through Vrindavan, herds of grazing cows saw him pass, and immediately surrounding him began to moo very loudly. Seeing the herds approach him, the Lord was stunned with ecstatic love. The cows then began to lick his body in great affection. Becoming pacified, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to caress the cows, and the cows, being unable to give up his company, went with him. It was with great difficulty that the cowherd men were able to keep the cows back. Then when the Lord chanted, all the deer heard his sweet voice and approached him. When the does and bucks came and saw the Lord's face, they began to lick his body. Not being at all afraid of him, they accompanied him along the path. Bumblebees and birds, like the parrot and cuckoo, all began to sing loudly on the fifth note, and the peacocks began to dance in front of the Lord. Upon seeing Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the trees and creepers of Vrindavan became jubilant. Their twigs stood up, and they began to shed tears of ecstasy in the form of honey. The trees and creepers, overloaded with fruits and flowers, fell down at the lotus feet of the Lord and greeted Him with various presentations as if they were friends. Thus all the moving and non-moving living entities of Vrindavan became very jubilant to see the Lord. It was as if friends were made happy by seeing another friend. Seeing their affection, the Lord was moved by ecstatic love. He began to sport with them exactly as a friend sports with another friend. Thus he voluntarily came under the control of his friends. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to embrace each and every tree and creeper, and they began to offer their fruits and flowers as if in meditation. The Lord's body was restless, and tears, trembling, and jubilation were manifest. He said very loudly, Chant Krishna! Chant Krishna! All the moving and non-moving creatures then began to vibrate the transcendental sound of Hare Krishna, as if they were echoing the deep sound of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Lord then clasped the necks of the deer and began to cry. 
There was jubilation manifest in the bodies of the deer, and tears were in their eyes. When a male and female parrot appeared on the branches of a tree, the Lord saw them and wanted to hear them speak. Both parrots flew onto the hand of the Lord and began to chant the transcendental qualities of Krishna, and the Lord listened to them as they quoted from the Govinda Lilamrita. The male parrot sang, The glorification of Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is beneficial for everyone in the universe. His beauty is victorious over the gopis of Vrindavan, and it subdues their patience. His pastimes astound the goddess of fortune, and his bodily strength turns Govardhan Hill into a small toy like a ball. His spotless qualities are unlimited, and his behavior satisfies everyone. Lord Krishna is attractive to everyone. Oh, may our Lord maintain the whole universe. <coughs> After hearing this description of Lord Krishna from the male parrot, the female parrot began to recite a description of Sri Mati Radharani. The female parrot said, <coughs> Sri Mati Radharani's affection. Our exquisite beauty and good behavior, our artistic dancing and chanting, and her poetic compositions are all so attractive that they attract the mind of Krishna, who attracts the mind of everyone in the universe. Thereafter, the male parrot said, Krishna is the enchanter of the mind of Cupid. He then began to recite another verse. The parrot said, My dear Shari, Sri Krishna carries a flute and enchants the hearts of all women throughout the universe. He is specifically the enjoyer of beautiful gopis, and he is the enchanter of Cupid also. Let him be glorified. <laughs> Then the female parrot began to speak jokingly to Shuka, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was struck with wonderful ecstatic love to hear her speak. The parrot Shari said, When Lord Sri Krishna is with Radharani, he is the enchanter of Cupid. Otherwise, when he is alone, he himself is enchanted by erotic feelings, even though he enchants the whole universe. Both parrots then flew onto a tree, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began to watch the dancing of peacocks with curiosity. When the Lord saw the bluish necks of the peacocks, his remembrance of Krishna immediately awakened, and he fell to the ground in ecstatic love. When the Brahmins saw that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was unconscious, he and Balabhadra Bhattacharya took care of him. They hastily sprinkled water over the Lord's body. Then they took up his cloth and began to fan him with it. They then began to chant the holy name of Krishna into the Lord's ear. When the Lord regained consciousness, he began rolling on the ground. When the Lord rolled on the ground, sharp thorns injured his body. Taking him on his lap, Balabhadra Bhattacharya pacified him. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind wandered in ecstatic love of Krishna. He immediately stood up and said, Chant! Chant! Then he himself began to dance. Being thus ordered by the Lord, both Balabhadra Bhattacharya and the Brahmin began to chant the holy name of Krishna. Then the Lord, dancing and dancing, proceeded along the path.
The Brahmin was astounded to see the symptoms of ecstatic love exhibited by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He then became anxious to give the Lord protection. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mind was absorbed in ecstatic love at Jagannath Puri. But when he passed along the road on the way to Vrindavan, that love increased a hundred times. The Lord's ecstatic love increased a thousand times when he visited Mathura, but it increased a hundred thousand times when he wandered in the forests of Vrindavan. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was elsewhere, the very name of Vrindavan was sufficient to increase his ecstatic love. Now when he was actually traveling in the Vrindavan forest, his mind was absorbed in great ecstatic love day and night. He ate and bathed simply out of habit. Thus I have written a description of the ecstatic love Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifested while he walked through the twelve forests of Vrindavan. To describe it all would be impossible. Lord Ananta writes millions of books elaborately describing the transformations of ecstatic love experienced by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Vrindavan. Since Lord Ananta himself cannot describe even a fragment of these pastimes, I am simply pointing out the direction. The whole world became merged in the inundation of the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One can swim in that water to the extent that he has the strength. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. <laughs> This ends chapter 17 of the Madhya Leela, The Lord Travels to Vrindavan.